Welcome to the Creative Breakthrough. I have been waiting weeks to do this episode that we're going to get into today, and that is how to start a side hustle. I am obsessed with side hustles. I love side hustles. If I had more time, I would just do side hustles. Like literally, I would make my career out of side hustles. And here's why, okay? What is a side hustle? First of all, let me explain to you. A side hustle is an activity outside of your day job that helps you make money. So you're gonna go to your nine to five, and then after your nine to five, or even during your nine to five, depending on what you end up side hustling with, you will work on a separate endeavor that makes money. And the great thing about a side hustle is, is that it's extra income on top of your day job. So it's like you could set it up for your travel fund or your retirement fund or something fun that you wanna buy with it. But it also gives you this sense of security with everything going on, the, on in the world right now. Um, and this is being recorded in October of 2020, so still in the middle of COVID pandemic. I mean, it's, it's slowed down in some states, it's getting faster in others, it's increasing in Florida, but we pretend that it doesn't exist. Europe is shutting down again. I mean, we don't know when COVID is gonna end. And so like the really great thing about having a side hustle is having that extra income in case you get furloughed or laid off from your job, or if you already have, how do you start a side hustle? And it's been amazing because I've been watching on Facebook so many of my friends who have lost their jobs and they are they are really pumping the gears and they're finding their side hustles. And it's just so amazing because you have to really tap into your inner self to find a side hustle and then get it off the ground. And so we're gonna go over that today. How do you find a side hustle? Now there's two types of side hustles I like to say there's the there's the side hustle where you go and work for someone else like it's a second job so you can go drive uber or you can deliver food like with doordash um you can deliver groceries with instacart you can do tasks for people with task rabbit i like to say that's more like a second job um, it's still like a side hustle because you're making extra money on top of your nine to five, but you don't own that income. So like if Uber goes out of business or DoorDash goes out of business or they lower their wages and it doesn't make sense for you anymore, it's no longer a side hustle. I want to talk to you about side hustles that will allow you at a certain point in time, maybe not immediately, obviously in day one, but over time, make you your own boss, show you about, teach you about entrepreneurship, let you take control of your future. Cause that's really important is how do you control your future? How do you control where life throws you? Right? I, it's, it's so hard to sit at a desk job every day for someone else and not know when are you going to get laid off? When are you going to get fired? When is your job going to disappear? Right? But with your own side hustle, you you answer those questions. It's up to you to decide those things. So we're going to get into that today. Okay. So when you're thinking of your side hustles and we're going to go through the three steps of creating a great side hustle, but something to start thinking about is when you're creating a side hustle, I want you to keep three things in mind. What are you passionate about? What is your purpose? And what do you want to be doing long term? Because you really have to enjoy your side hustle long term for it to be really worth your time. Because what's going to happen is if you don't really enjoy it and you're just doing it because it's a side hustle and it's extra money, you're not going to be invested in it. You're not going to be fully time committed to it. And over time, you're just going to stop doing it. You're going to stop prioritizing it. So it's super important that you, it fits your lifestyle to a degree, right? It's something that when you come home from work, when you come home from uh, taking care of your kids or bringing them home from school, you actually want to sit down and work on it. So how, how does your side hustle fit into your day to day? It's really important to take that into account. Now, another thing to keep in mind with a side hustle is it can be, it's not limited to one thing. Like a side hustle can be a service that you provide. So it can be coaching, right? It can be, um, it could be cleaning someone's house. It could be washing cars. It could be a physical product that you are going to sell. It doesn't even have to be your product. It could be somebody else's product that you're going to sell or your own. It could be handmade, handmade crafts or goods. Um, it can be a digital product and digital products are amazing. Digital products. I'm talking about like webinars, um, online classes, um, even virtual coaching, but digital products are great because what happens is you create it once, right? You put in all this time and effort and you create this amazing course, like how to start a podcast over 10 weeks or how to be a comedian over 10 weeks or how to be, how to set up your house to be a studio. If you're a musician, it could be how to make a cake, right? These are just examples. And you package this up and then you host it on the internet. And then all you have to do after you've created this product is market it and promote it and get people to go buy it. And so now you've got passive income coming in, right? So you're not really taking up a lot of time out of your day to do your side hustle, upset the marketing and the promotion because the product already exists. 
and passive income is like one of the best side hustles that you can have because now you can have multiple passive incomes coming in. Um, and so that's something to think about. Another thing is it can be your side hustle could be a skill or talent that you have that you're not going to share with the world. So for example, like, are you a really good singer? Can you help somebody else learn how to sing? Can you coach them how to sing? So how can you use your talents? Right. But I don't want you to be so focused on what are your talents and your skills because to have a side hustle, you don't necessarily have to have a talent, right? You just have to be good at something. I don't need you to be great at something. I need you to be good at something and enjoy doing it. Okay. And so we're going to get into that a little bit more. So now to start a side hustle there, it comes down to three things. There's three important aspects of creating a side hustle. One is you need to have an idea. And I really want you to spend a lot of time on this. I want you to really brainstorm these ideas. I don't want you to come up with just one idea. I want you to come up with 10 ideas. You're not going to pursue all 10, but I want you to come up with one idea so that when we go through the rest of this exercise, you can kind of see which one makes the most sense. So I want you to spend some time on number one, ideating. And we're just going to, we're going to jump into that in a second. The second part of starting a successful side hustle is that once you have an idea, you need to know how to monetize that idea. And that's why it's important to start with a lot of ideas, because once you start getting into the monetization phase, that's when you're going to realize what is worth your time, what is worth your effort and what is going to, where are you going to see long-term results, right? Short-term results are important, but you really want to also look at long-term results. So it's really important to see how are you going to monetize your side hustle. And then the last one that's really important that I think a lot of people overstep or don't even pay attention to is how are you going to market your idea? How are you going to get people to know about your idea? How are you going to get clients to sign up with you, right? Or buy your product or your service. And that's a lot. That's where a lot of people just don't think about. They think they're just going to tell their friends and family and they're just going to become overnight successful entrepreneurs. And that is not how it works because a lot of time our friends and family are not interested in what we're doing. Like they want to be supportive and they may be supportive in the beginning for you, but it also depends on what you're selling and what's the price. Maybe they can't afford it or maybe they're not interested in spending that money. So it's really important to think about marketing. Now, one thing I want to be really clear about is today's we're talking about side hustles. I'm not necessarily saying your hobbies are side hustles. Your hobbies can be your hobbies. Um, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago in an episode. I'm not saying that you need to make money from your hobbies. Your hobbies can be your hobbies, but I'm saying that if you want to take that to the next level now, especially because if you, if you were just performing comedy for free all this time, right? And now COVID hit and there's no comedy clubs, how do you pivot? Right? And that's what I'm talking about. Pivoting your hobbies per se, or even taking your hobbies and making them profitable. But you don't necessarily, I'm not saying you have to do this. So please, please don't think that I'm trying to take your creative passions and your pursuits and monetizing them. This is for people who are willing and ready and want to take that next step in their creative in their creative journey. Okay, so let's talk about ideation. Now, I want to caveat this with saying you could already be doing something right now that could become your side hustle. And so I'm going to give you an example. When I started this podcast, I was not trying to create a side hustle out of this podcast. The idea from this podcast was not to make money. The idea of this podcast was I really wanted to have a voice. I wanted to share my voice and I wanted to share mentorship and strategies and inspiration from these creatives of color who have been so willing with their time to talk to you all and talk to me and have these conversations. But over time, now that I'm in episode like 56 or 57, I realized like, I've been putting in a lot of time and effort into this podcast, right? It takes a lot of effort to create a podcast. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money. It's not free to put a podcast together. And so over these last year or two years, this podcast is actually now two years old. Um, I've actually been figuring out ways how to monetize my podcast. So for example, like I can run ads during my podcast. I've been doing coaching. So coaching clients who have found me through my podcast, who want to have some creative coaching. I've gotten speaking engagements through my podcast. Um, so there's, there's different ways that you can monetize something that you're already doing. Another example is like comedy. When I started doing stand up comedy, it was a passion. It was something I really wanted to do. It was a hobby. I wasn't getting paid to do it, but now over time, I know my worth. I know my value. I've got, I've got credentials behind me. I've got HBO behind me. I've got NBC behind me. And so from comedy, I've been able to spread my wings more. And now I get speaking engagements. I get opportunities to MC events. I get opportunities to be a part of act like a web series and do some acting. Um, I get opportunities to be on people's podcasts and sometimes they pay me to be on their podcast. So 
I want you to, when you're ideating, I want you to, to take a really broad stance in ideating. So take a look at what you're already doing, right? For fun. What are your hobbies? What are things that you started doing for fun that you aren't getting paid for? And, and how do we figure out how do you get paid for it, right? So like, wait, let's go back to podcasting. So I, I gave you some examples. Other things that I could do with podcasting that I haven't done yet, but the other ideas that I could do is I could create a course. I could create a, I could create a digital product course where I put like, a, a curriculum together on how to create a podcast, market a podcast, and be successful with a podcast, put it up on the internet, and then send people to buy that course, right? I can do podcast coaching, so one-on-one -on -one podcast coaching. Um, maybe I don't want to do, maybe I don't want to teach someone how to do a podcast, but how can I help someone be more successful with their podcast, right? So could I do audio editing? Could I do podcast producing? Could I help somebody with their social media marketing and promotions and teaching them that, right? So there's just so many different aspects that you can take. Same with comedy. Could I teach someone comedy? Could I teach a storytelling class? Could I teach improv? Could I go into corporations and teach them how to use humor in the boardroom, right? So there's just so many different avenues that you can take with a product or service or something that you already do. But like I mentioned, your idea can be a service. So can you coach someone? Can you can you be a freelance writer? Can you, um, can you help somebody do something, get better at something like social media? Are you good at social media? Can you, can you help somebody grow their social media? Can you help them with their engagement? Can you help them create posts and content, um, and using Photoshop or graphic design or whatever you're really good at, right? What are these things that you can do? So examples, another, uh, other examples I want to talk about, like, can you start a YouTube channel? Can you start a blog? Um, if you're a writer, so, a couple episodes ago, and I say that, like season one, I had Jasmine Darznick on my podcast, and one of the, she's a New York Times bestselling author, and I was asking her, like, how did you get discovered? How did you find an agent? How did you find someone who wanted to publish you? And she said she had all these pieces out on the internet, right, on, on different websites and different blogs. And so if you're a writer and you're trying to get noticed, can you start a blog? Are you... Um, are you an actor or a baker or a musician? Can you start a YouTube channel? Can you start a Shopify store or an Etsy store? And what is Shopify and Etsy? So Shopify, like say you have a physical product that you want to sell, whether it's your own product or someone else's product, you can set up a website on Shopify. It's, and, and if you want, um, you can use Shopify. You can use my, uh, my code for 14 free days to try out Shopify. It's funnybrowngirl.com forward slash Shopify, and you'll get 14 free days. And that's what the platform I use for my CBD business. Um, it's on the Shopify platform and everything gets handled through Shopify. Then people can purchase your items. You're shipping through Shopify. Um, everything happens through there. Problem is, is that you're from, if you're on the Shopify platform, now you're responsible for marketing that stuff, right? Now say you make handmade goods and crafts and products, and maybe you don't want to spend the monthly subscription for Shopify. You can put them on Etsy and Etsy is an online marketplace. It's basically, I don't want to call it a flea market. It's not really, it's, it, it's high quality stuff but it's everybody in the world who has a product. So for example, masks, so many people are making masks these days, right? You could create your own website to sell masks, but then you've got to send traffic to that website or you can put it up on Etsy. And what Etsy does, it's an online marketplace. So it's like walking into a virtual mall and then you can go into different stores and see what they have. And Etsy as a whole markets the whole platform for you. So Etsy is driving traffic to the mall. Etsy is driving traffic to the store, right? You just have to have good enough product at a good enough price for people to want to come and buy it, if that makes sense. So you can have, um, you can have virtual products. You can have your handmade products. Say you're an artist, right? Um, and you, you paint and you, or you're a graphic designer. Can you create an on-demand, on um, t-shirt company? Can you, can you put up your prints for people to buy t-shirts from? And it's really great because there's all these on-demand print companies now. So say you create this awesome design, you don't have to go and buy a hundred t-shirts and then ship them out yourselves. You put it up on this other company's website and then you market that company's website. And then people go there and buy the t-shirts. And as they buy the t-shirts, the company makes them for you and sends them out on your behalf. You don't make as much money because they take a really big cut of your profits. Um, but at least this way you're not sitting with a hundred t-shirts at home. If you're a chef, could you make an ebook? Could you create an ebook of recipes? If you're a dancer, could you do online classes right now? Can you teach people how to dance? Can you pivot a little bit and teach dancing in a health and fitness way? Because a lot of people are sitting at home right now wanting to get healthy. They want to lose weight, but there's only so many things you can do at home to exercise. And be, like, I'm so tired of going for a run. Like if one more person's like, go for a run. No, I want to do something different. Can you teach me how to dance, but in a fun, energetic way? If you're, if you're a, um, 
say you're, you're good at social media or website design or graphic design, or you're just, you're a corporate America person who wants to be a creative, but isn't sure where to get started. Can you join the gig economy? Can you join Fiverr or Upwork.com? And these sites are where you actually get to say, you create a profile for yourself and you say, these are all the things I'm really good at. I'm really good at creating a web design. I'm really good at, um, writing code. I'm really good at creating social media posts. I'm really good at writing content, cr creating content. I can make your TikTok videos for you. I mean, I would sign up for a hot minute. If you told me you can make me TikTok video, sign me up. Like seriously, slide into my DMs right now. You can make me TikTok videos, but you can join these websites like upwork.com and fiverr.com. And again, it's a marketplace where pe I, people are going there to try to find the best people to do work for them. And you just have to create a really great profile with really great recommendations. Okay. So I want you to spend a lot of time ideating and I want, I'm going to, I'm going to put this out there for you guys. The first 10 people who slide into my DMS on Instagram, that's at funny Brown girl. I will help you ideate. If you need help, if you're stuck, if you're just not sure where to go with your ideation, slide into my DMS and let's talk. I want to continue this conversation. I don't want any of you to get stuck. So if you are creative and I haven't talked about your specific creativity, like bubble, please reach out to me and let's talk about it. Um, another thing I talk about, talk, thought about was like, like I'm doing this podcast right now and I'm videotaping myself and it's going to go on YouTube, right? Say you have a YouTube channel already. Say it's doing really well, but you want to make some extra cash, right? Could you go and coach me? Could you coach me on creating a YouTube channel? Can you help me with my editing on YouTube? Can you help me with creating my thumbnails or my, uh, my blurbs on YouTube? There's just, there's so many different things that you can do. And people are willing to pay for that because everybody right now is, is overwhelmed. Everybody's really busy. And like, I can tell you this, like I have a, um, and I didn't say this in the beginning. So let me take a step back. Like I have a couple side hustles, right? So I do stand up comedy. Um, I have this podcast and I will say with this podcast, like I have hired someone who does my production for me. So someone takes this raw content and edits for me and then publishes it for me. Right? So they're right there, right? Somebody else. I'm, I have my side hustle, which is the podcast. And then someone else has their side hustle, which is editing and producing this podcast for me. I have a website, um, an e-commerce site on Shopify that I mentioned where I sell CBD. Now, CBD is something that I'm really passionate about. I'm re it's a purpose. It's my, it's my purpose to help people live their best life, which is what CBD does. It helps you live your best life because if you deal with pain or sleep or anxiety, it's a natural remedy that can help you get off your prescription medication, which is why it fits into something that I want to do. And it fits into my lifestyle. Um, and it's something that I can, I can interject into my day to day life. Right. Um, but even while I'm doing that, like I have, I have outsourced my SEO, my search engine optimization. I have someone else doing that for me because someone else is better at it than I am. I have someone else doing my social media now for it. So I'm actually paying someone to do the social media for my company. So again, I have my side hustle, which is my Shopify store to sell CBD, a physical product. And then someone else, I've hired someone else to do their side hustle to help me with my, with growing the business. And then the fourth side hustle I have is empowering female female entrepreneurs in Africa. So I sell their handmade crafts for them because obviously right now in Africa, like a lot of the markets are shut down and they can't, the tourists aren't coming to the markets because we're, we're not traveling. And so how do they stay successful and how do they stay making money and feeding their families? And so I'm helping them do that. Right. So there's just, there's side hustles everywhere. It's just finding the one that you want and the finding the one that aligns with your skill set and finding the one that aligns with your lifestyle. What are you going to be committed to long term? Because what I would hate to see you do is start something and then decide that that's not for you um, and then shift because you didn't spend enough time ideating. Okay. So now ideate, right? And again, if you get stuck, please reach out to me. Let's talk about it. Let's flush this out because there's just so many things out there that you can do. Um, and spend some time searching on upwork.com or fiverr.com and just seeing what is out there. Now, the second part is once you ideate, you have to figure out how are you going to monetize this idea, right? Cause you don't want to create this amazing idea and then give it away for free. You need to know what is your value? What, what do you bring to the table? So there's a couple things you need to think about. So if you're going to sell a physical product or uh, arts, like a craft, something you made. So whether let's say it's a mask, let's take masks. For example, you're going to sell masks. Okay. On Etsy you need to understand how much is it going to cost you? What are the costs, right? So you've got to think about the fabric. You've got to think about your time. You've got to think about the, the price that the cost it's going to cost you to put it up on Etsy. So there is a cost to putting your products up on Etsy. It's about 60 cents 
I think, a month per product. Um, and it adds up because if you have 10 products, that's 60 cents times 10 products, that's $6 every month that you have to pay to put this product up. So you want to make sure your products are great. And then you've got to figure out, okay, now I know my cost. How much do I want to charge for this product, right? And are you going to include free shipping or not free shipping? And then what's your profit, right? And you want to make sure that you're making enough money for your side hustle to be productive and to be something sustainable because if you're only making a dollar or two dollars now you're going to have to think quantity wise if i'm only making a dollar on each mask i at least want to sell at least a hundred masks a day if not a week to make a hundred dollars but if i'm selling if my profit is say ten dollars now i only need to sell ten masks to make that same hundred dollars so you understand how you really need to think through the math you need to think through the finances um, you want to know what is your strategy right so like if you are going to be a coach, right? If you want to be a creative coach or you want to be a writing coach or you want to be an acting coach, how much are you going to charge an hour? And if you, how much are you going to charge an hour and then how many clients are you going to need to be successful at what you're doing, right? Because say you're only charging $30 an hour, but you only have one client. Is that going to be sustainable for you? Are you going to put the effort in to continue being a coach, an acting coach, right? So like, how do you grow that? And how do you, how do you charge for what your, what is your value? Um, if you start a YouTube channel, for example, that it, YouTube being a micro influencer, even writing, a, starting a blog, a vlog, um, these things take time. You're not going to be an overnight sensation. I mean, you might be, you could be, you could be amazing at what you do and you could be an overnight sensation, but you have to build up followers, right? To be a micro influencer, they're looking for about 10,000 followers on YouTube. You have to hit a certain caveat of subscribers, not even not even views on your video. Say you hit a million views, it doesn't matter. To monetize on YouTube, you have to hit a number of subscribers. So there's there's time involved in that. How are you gonna hit that number, right? So you gotta think long-term, like is, is starting a YouTube channel the best way to monetize yourself right now? Or are there other things that you can do while you're building up the YouTube channel? So like, for example, I, like I have my CBD store, right? And I have this podcast. Now I have a YouTube channel and that the goal of the YouTube channel is not to be monetized, but the YouTube channel helps drive traffic to my CBD store and to my podcast because I upload videos onto YouTube and YouTube is actually the number two search engine after Google. So if you are trying to grow a YouTube channel, one way to do that is to, to use it first to drive traffic to another side hustle that you're doing and start developing subscribers and then also spending time growing that YouTube channel at the same time, if that makes sense. Another thing is like Patreon. You could start a Patreon account. I have a Ko-Fi account um, and these are accounts. These are again, platforms that you join and you can ask your fans for money or donations. I don't like to say money. You're asking your fans for a donation to you for your product or service or what you're offering them. So like a lot of musicians have Patreon accounts and podcasters have them too. And what they do is they set up this great account and you, you subscribe to the Patreon and you say, I'm going to give you $5 a month or $10 a month or $20 a month. And for that amount of money, either I'm not going to get anything, um, or the, the band or the artist could give you a sticker if you donate $5 or a pencil, if you donate $10, or if you donate hundred dollars, they might give you some original content that you wouldn't get. So a lot of podcasters do two episodes. The one episode goes out to the public and then one episode is private and only for the people who pay through Patreon. So I have a Ko-Fi account. It's similar to Patreon. Um, but when, when I did the, when I looked at the two, they just had different benefits. Each one has different benefits. So I would suggest you look at which one you like. They do both take a fee. So anybody who donates to you, those companies then get a fee out of it before you get your money. Um, but if so, so, so for example, like if you find this episode amazing and you're like, wow, Shireen just dropped so much knowledge on me. I want to donate to her, right? I want to help her with her podcast, help her with the cost that it takes to get this podcast running and pay her producer and her editor. I'm going to go to Ko-Fi, that's K-O hyphen F-I dot com forward slash funny brown girl. And I'm going to donate to her. And the minimum donation is five US dollars, right? So there you go. Um, and then I would just say, be realistic with your goals. Don't think you're going to crush it on day one. Don't think you're going to get a thousand subscribers on your YouTube video. Don't think you're going to sell a hundred masks in a day. I mean, of course you can, if you set it up right, you can do all these things. I mean, there's no, there's no limit on what you can do. That's the great thing about being, having a side hustle. I just want you to be realistic about it because if you set your goals too high and they're not achievable, then you might start to feel like you're, you're not getting it. You know what I mean? You, you could start feeling 
you could start feeling failure. You could start being afraid of what's going to happen. You can start feeling that you're not doing a great job. And then the third thing, after you've got your idea, after you've figured out how, how you're going to monetize it, the third thing is knowing how you're going to market it. How are you going to find your clients? How are you going to find your customers? And this is a, this is something that a lot of side hustlers and even entrepreneurs forget about. They think that if they create the product or the service, then people are just going to come to them. They think that if they hold the Holy grail up in the sky, people are just going to flock to them. Problem is, is that there's so many people holding up the Holy grail in the sky. How do you even know who to flock to, right? How do I even know you exist? when I started my CBD business, my dad wasn't very supportive. Like he just didn't seem to care. He didn't seem to think I could do it. And it really bothered me because I couldn't understand why he didn't think I was going to be successful. Right. And it finally came out. He was like, you're going to do all this work. You're going to get these great products. You're going to put up this great website, but how are people going to find you? How are you going to market it? Right. And it's actually funny because there are so many people who have put up websites to sell CBD and you don't even know they exist because they just put up a website and they never thought about marketing. They never thought about promotions, but I had a plan. I had already put together my business plan. And so that's why I'm telling you, like, this is a step that a lot of people forget to do is figuring out how are you going to get people to come to you? And like I mentioned earlier, you can tell your friends and family, but they may not be interested in what you want to buy. They may not be interested in what you have to sell, or they're going to ask for a friends and family discount. And then you're just going to be stuck because like the last thing I want you to do is have like 10 clients that are all getting the friends and family discount and you're not really making anything. You're not really side hustling. Um, so really think about that. And there's, there's obviously there's lots of ways that you can drive traffic. And these are just some, you're going to have to think a little bit or more broad than this, but like you can start building your social media. So like while you're ideating right now and you're marketing, really start focusing on building your social media, really start getting, getting people to follow you on, on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok, getting, getting that social media built up. Um, another way to drive traffic is if you are on these platforms like Etsy or Upwork or Fiverr, because they drive the traffic to the website, you're not really driving the traffic. Tell your friends and family that is totally fine. Start a newsletter. Do you have a website right now? Do you already have a website up and running? Start driving people to that website and get them to subscribe to your email list because that is you, you own that you own that email list, right? Instagram owns your followers. Facebook owns your followers. But if you have an email list, that is yours. So if Facebook disappears tomorrow and you can't promote on Facebook anymore, you still have your email list. So start getting people to subscribe to your email list. Um, and then use your own platform. So like when I started the CBD business, I mentioned it on my podcast. When I met, started the female entrepreneur company that I have called Womandela, I, I put it up on this podcast. I use the radio. I, I, um, I use social media. And then one thing that I did do when I started this podcast, which was, I think genius, ingenious, and I would do it. I, I went through my entire address book and I compiled all my email addresses. Okay. And I looked at my Google account. I've had a Gmail email address since 2005. So for 15 years, I accumulated all those email addresses. And when the podcast launched, I emailed each person. Um, it took me about six days because Gmail limits how many people you can email to 2000 a day. Um, and so just every day I kept sending out an email to 2000 people. Hey, I have this podcast. Hey, I have this podcast. And we were trending at number eight guys in the first week, this podcast launched, we were at number eight. That is huge. And that's because I, I let everybody know in my, in my, in my network, I let people know who hadn't heard from me in years. I, I had no shame guys. And every time I do a comedy show or anytime I'm in a social setting with people and people are like, she's a comedian, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and I'm a podcaster, sign up to my podcast. So you also have to be very shameless in promoting yourself. And, and, and I say shameless because somebody, somebody said that because there's, there's promotion and then there's shameless promotion. And I will sometimes tiptoe on that line. And shameless is like, nobody was asking you Shireen to promote your podcast right now. Why are you promoting your podcast? And I'm like, well, listen, because I have an audience right now and I'm not going to let this opportunity take me like bypass me. Right? So I just want to go back through the three things that you need to start a successful side hustle. One, you need an idea. Please, please, please spend a lot of time on this. Really think about what is your idea. Okay. And list them out, list all your ideas out. The second step, how are you going to monetize it? So next to each idea, let me see 
L talk to me. What are you, how are you going to monetize it? What are the ideas to monetize these ideas, right? And then the third step, how are you going to market these ideas? How are you going to get people to find you? How are you going to get people to know about what you're doing, okay? And then once you have that, then you can start thinking about how are you going to launch this product, right? So I really suggest creating a business plan. Again, we've already kind of done it, but a business plan really is going to say, here's my idea. Here's how much I think I'm going to make out of it, right? And be reasonable, be realistic. And this is how I'm going to get people out there. And I would also tell yourself to write down because you're going to need this on really on days when you're really starting to feel like this side hustle is not going anywhere. Why are you choosing to do this side hustle? Like why this? Why? How does this align with your passion, your purpose, your lifestyle? Um, and your long-term goals, how does it all come together? So really think about that. And again, if you need help, if you have questions, I know I said, um, I'm going to limit to the first 10 people. I just don't want to get overwhelmed, um, because the first 10 people I will get on a Skype call with you for 10 to 20 minutes and we can flush this out. But if you're not one of those first 10 people still reach out to me, slide into my DMS. You can email me at hi at funnybrowngirl.com. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at funny brown girl. Talk to me. If you're stuck, talk to me. Let's, let's flush this out. I want you guys all to be successful. I want you to be able to find your side hustles. I don't want anybody to end up in a situation like I was where I had this great job and then I didn't have a great job, right? And I didn't have any job and now I'm stuck and there's no comedy to make money. And there is speaking engagements, but they're virtual. So they're not paying as much because think about it, right? Um, when you, when you were doing speaking engagements before they would have to rent out this big ballroom and then they could charge tickets for people to come and they were making this big profit. Now it's virtual and people are doing it from their own computers, from their own bedrooms. Like nobody wants to pay, nobody's going to pay $150 anymore to come to a seminar, right? So, um, you don't get as paid as much to do speaking engagements anymore. So it's thinking about how do you plan for the future, right? If COVID lasts for a year or two years, again, not trying to be negative Nancy or depressing, but there's a chance that the world is never going to be back to the way it was. And how are you preparing yourself for that? How are you pivoting from what you're doing now to what you can be doing to be successful and be your own boss and be an entrepreneur, right? So let's, let's, I want us to think about this and, and really be successful. Like the idea of this podcast is to be successful and have your breakthrough. So what is your breakthrough? And if you have your breakthrough already, share it with me. Tell me what it is. I want to know what it is because I, like I said, I've been watching people on Facebook having their breakthroughs and it is incredible to see people who have started baking for people who are starting to do cooking, um, at home deliveries, woodwork, um, creating, uh, tapestries, creating face masks. Face masks is something I wish I had gotten into right in March. Like I missed the boat on that one, y'all. Like that was a great, and I'm not saying that that's still not a bad idea. Like you can still get into it. Um, but I definitely missed the boat on that one. Um, ebooks, start writing an ebook. Ebooks are great because you own those. Like you write them and you put them up on Amazon and you charge whatever you want and you can say you're a published author, right? Webinars. And the other great thing about all these things is if you're stuck, like you say you want to make a digital product tomorrow, there are webinars out there that are free right now that you can go watch and they will teach you how to create a digital product. Um, and again, I think that anything that you can find in, in a passive income space is amazing. So I'm going to leave you guys with that because I gave you a lot and I really want you to spend, um, the next month really, because I'm putting this podcast out and then in two weeks we'll have a guest speaker, another conversation with someone. And then in two weeks later, we're going to revisit your side hustle. So you guys have a month to do these exercises. So really just start writing, start ideating, start talking about your monetization and start talking about your marketing. And in a month, I want to know what all of you guys are doing because you guys should all have a plan. You guys should all have something ready to go. Okay. So with that, flex your creative muscle and keep winning.